It's hard to believe the final season of Star Trek Lower Decks is almost upon us. Say it ain't so, we're not ready. For five years now, the show has been a gift to Trekkies and Trekkers everywhere, bringing the laughs, the Easter eggs and the ups. Mike McMahon created a show that would serve its own ongoing continuity, while also serving as a space for returning guest stars to pop up for some fun. You might even name it Star Trek Deepest Cuts. Consider that one trademarked. With so few episodes left to us, what are the things that we cannot live without? I'm Sean Ferry for Trek Culture, and here are 10 things we want to see in Star Trek Lower Decks Season 5. Number 10. More Cameos some of the faces that have popped up in this show were shocking. Robert Duncan McNeil has played both Tom Paris and Nick Locarno, though why they hired the same actor I'll never know, they look nothing alike. Susan Gibney returned as Dr. Leah Brahms, Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sears has popped up as Riker and Troy, while John Delancey tried to make everyone play life-size chess as Q. If there's one thing that this show does well, and there are many things it does well, but it finds the balance between fan service and genuine storytelling. Therefore, hoping for cameos also means hoping for the stories that suit them to appear in. Ensign Harry Kim, please make him an ensign still, and Belana Torres are now the only Star Trek Voyager alum not to return to Trek in some form. Sadly, Jennifer Leon is unlikely to return, but that doesn't mean Garrett Wong or Roxanne Dawson couldn't pop up to say hello before the show ends. Just a very, very quick note, you will see a very obviously missing thing on this list because I wrote it and I recorded it before the trailer came out, so how excited are we for Garrett Wong coming back as Harry Kim? <laughs> I can't wait. Anyway, better get back to the list. We'd not say no to resolving the Cisco arc either, mind. Perhaps Section 31, now led by Bashir, with a little help from Garrick, could pop into the Celestial Temple and remind him it's his turn to change the nappies. The possibilities are endless. Number 9. The Romulan Evacuation Effort Star Trek Lower Decks takes place in the early 2380s, a couple of years before the Romulan supernova changes the face of the Alpha and Beta quadrants. While Lower Decks is a comedy show, it hasn't been afraid to address some heavier topics in the past, which is where the Romulan evacuation effort comes in. We don't know yet where the show will leave its characters as it comes to a close. Rutherford seems to be likeliest to head towards Mars to help Commodore LaForge in building the fleet with Billups there to guide him. Now don't get us wrong, we don't want to see either of them go up in flames, but the Romulan supernova is now the fixed of event that spreads across Star Trek Picard, Star Trek Prodigy and Star Trek Discovery. Bringing Lower Decks into that field unifies the series, though here it would make more sense to announce the beginning of the project. Despite all of the advanced technology available to Starfleet and the Romulan Empire, they had roughly six years of warning before the star exploded. In Lower Decks' timeline, that would mean both superpowers were already aware of it as the fifth season dawns. Number 8. Tendi's Resolution the clip from presumably the opening episode of Season 5 that was released on Star Trek Day shows Tendi in her full Orion fantasy. She may once have been the Mistress of the Winter Constellations, but she's aiming for a nicer approach to pirating these days. Why kill when you can just scare? We will probably see a resolution to Tendi's journey with her people. Whether this will be a final resolution remains to be seen, though we suspect that her Starfleet and Orion careers will either completely part ways or find a new way to coexist. Tendi has worked hard to break the stereotype that all Orions are pirates, even if most other Orions are working just as hard to confirm that theory. While they're not likely to join the Federation, it is more likely that a deal will be brokered, allowing her to return to duty and probably costing Starfleet rather a lot. Perhaps Freeman could help with the terms. She did fairly well with to Grand Nagus Rom, after all. Number 7. Promotions? Lower Decks' third season closed with the revelation that Boimler, Tendi, Mariner, and Talin were getting promotions. Rutherford would follow, but there were rather a lot of shiny new pips on those collars as the fourth season began. Going into a fifth season, this is something we're a little divided on. It would be lovely to see our favourite officers advancing in their fields, receiving that recognition that they deserve, but the show is called Star Trek Lower Decks. Might it defeat the purpose to promote them any further? Part of the charm of these characters is that they're not the top brass, nor are they likely to become top brass in the foreseeable future. More on that in a moment. They are, however, incredibly skilled at what they do, so seeing them expand their roles while remaining lower deckers would be, in our minds at least, an essential element for the show to finish on. Number 6. Sela. I can hear you now, don't worry. Broken record much? Still, with the aforementioned Romulan evacuation efforts seeming a good inclusion for this season, it may be the final chance to address the Sela in the room. Just where was she when everything was going down? It may be possible that Sela was connected to the Tal Shiar, and by extension the Jat Vash. This may be unlikely, but Star Trek Online included a storyline that saw the black sheep of the Yar family responsible for the supernova. Omitting her from the ongoing seasons seems a bit of a misstep. Denise Crosby has returned to the franchise before. She 
voiced the character in online while also appearing as a hologram in Star Trek Picard's third season. Having her return as the antagonist for Lower Decks' final season would be the cherry on top of the Captain Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker Sprinkles. Time has nearly run out for the 24th and 25th centuries. Let's go out with a blonde bombshell. Number 5. Boimler on the Command Pass Though I've already bemoaned the idea of giving our Lower Deckers any promotions, Brad Boimler has already proved his command aptitude. Granted, it took a crisis or three, but paradoxes aside, he deserves to at least be headed in that direction. We've seen other characters go through command training, so Boimler seems a natural fit for the program. He may even have to face off against himself or his own transporter twin to climb to the top, but Boimler being Boimler, we know there's no better man for the job. Unless he can get a handle on those screams, he may be destined to command a freighter, but a command is a command, and in Old Friends New Planets, he was more than able to step up to the plate. Boimler is every one of us who hopes for more, dealing with our own anxieties along the way. He's got this, and so do we. Number 4. Shax and Ta'ana's Happy Ending no, not that kind of happy ending, get your mind out of the gutter. Shax and Ta'ana have one of the funniest and sweetest relationships in the franchise. Both are archetypes for their roles. Ta'ana is the grouchy chief medical officer who isn't afraid to get a bit murdery when the right betasoid comes along, while Shax is the sweet and muscular Bajoran security chief who takes his role to look after the crew very seriously. Together, they may be an unlikely pairing, but one that we would instantly root for. They've already shown that they have a deep bond, a loud one too. When Ta'ana fused with Billups, those physical memories were still present. Never has an animated version of Star Trek captured the thousand yard stare better than that look onto Ellipse's face. Theirs is a relationship for the history books. Conquering ship positions, stress and the odd transporter malfunction or two. Let's see what a combined Bajoran Cation wedding ceremony looks like. Number 3. A little damn respect for Freeman. Captain Carol Freeman has been through it on Star Trek Lower Decks. She's got command of a California-class ship, the flying gag of the fleet. Her crew are motley, her daughter drives her up the wall, and to add insult to injury, she was framed for destroying pack led planet. This, combined with the whole Buen Amigo thing, has not been the treatment this captain deserves. Season 5 looks likely to continue the, um, interesting journey that the Cerritos has been on. But one thing we would like to see is an award or two for its brave commander. The Christopher Pike Medal of Valor would look lovely on her wall. Maybe a few more commendations from Starfleet Command to go along with one, or, loath as we are to lose her, Admiral Freeman has a nice ring to it. She's earned it, let's be honest here. Other admirals slid their way up the list without so much as a single nacelle being torn from their ships. Yet, here's Freeman, slogging on day after day. If there are pips to be given, let's see her collar getting a little heavier. Number 2. Mariner's Ark Star Trek Lower Decks creator Mike McMahon may have called us out on our review of Mariner's arc in Season 4, but it left us thinking. Mariner, as frustrating as some of her steps backwards may have been, is depicted truthfully in the show. She deals with trauma while still leading the team, so some poor decisions are to be expected. What we would really like to see is, instead of a neat tying up of her arc, a continuation of how an officer dealing with trauma operates on the day-to-day. -day. Through Mariner, we've already seen her using humour to mask her uncertainties. Then, when she came face-to-face -face with Locarno, turning that back against him. It was a glorious moment, earned, if you will, and something we would like to see a lot more of as she grows in this final season. Number 1. Blow the ending open for ongoing series. With the show coming to an end, we would normally seek a nice happy resolution to all of the ongoing plots. However, we still feel as though Lower Decks is ending prematurely. So, with that being the case, resolutions are not the only thing we're seeking. We really want to see the groundwork laid for more stories to follow. Some of the wording when discussing the show's ending suggests it has a chance to be picked up somewhere else. In the modern world of streaming, that may seem unlikely. But remember, we saw Mariner and Boimler in live action on Strange New Worlds. Clearly, anything is possible. So let's start a whole bunch of side quests. Let's see Mariner get into more scrapes, Boimler cloned again, Rutherford okie dokieing his way into the engineering corps, and Tendi and Talin learn the true meaning of Christmas. Star Trek Lower Decks may be ending its run after its fifth season, but whoever said that it must be the end of its story? That's everything for our list today, folks. Now, we want to know what are you looking forward to in season five of Lower Decks? Let us know in the comments below and let us know over on social media. You can follow us, myself, at Sean Ferrick, or please follow the channel at Trek Culture as well. Well, you are awesome, you are wonderful, stay Vulcan as a mother f Live long and prosper, thank you very much.